Oh my gosh, you guys. So I just turned on the camera to shoot this and I had to click my truck on and click it off and my phone was literally just told me that it's 15 minutes to get to Outback Steakhouse right now. Middle of the afternoon seems like a weird place for me to head, but apparently my phone thinks I should. Anyways, you guys, I have a couple of TikToks that I want to share with you guys that I just wanted to, basically I wanted to share my thoughts and feelings about it and find out what your guys's were. So I guess let's just dive right into it. Well, this first one is something that I came across that definitely scared the bejeebies out of me and is one of the things that I am most fearful of in driving. And I just, I'm sure you guys will probably agree with me. Let's take a look here. Stop, 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 no! I, I guess I, this, this losing my brakes is some like deep seated fear deep in my heart and scares the bejeebies out of me and I it luckily it's never happened to me you know I've always driven well-maintained equipment to a point um, I've definitely worked for some large construction companies but at least the brakes were well maintained but being fully loaded in a dump truck and losing your brakes especially with like the places that we go in the trucks and then also being around school buses and cars and kids it just it's so scary I just, this, this video, uh, yeah, hits me deep. Yeah, I just, I cannot believe that he pulled that off. Is What would you guys have done in this situation? Because honestly, if it was me, I would have done something different. I mean, I, I watched the video, I've watched it a few times, but maybe let's, let's finish it out and then I'll tell you what I would have done. Hurry up and go. See what I mean? Oh my Jeez. god. Who was that? You don't want to know. Oh, I call it? Yeah. Oh god. Okay, so I did actually dive into this situation a little bit further past TikTok to find out exactly like what did happen after this driver passed the bus and this driver did a really good job of avoiding the school bus and the cars and I like I think that that's incredibly awesome but I, you still have to worry luckily he I later on he did get the truck stopped and I don't think anybody was really hurt but I, my biggest fear would be to get around that situation and then you're just faced with another um and I don't know that area and obviously I'm sure that driver knows the area a little bit better than uh obviously I would but um I personally because mostly because I worry about kids more than anything is I probably would have just ditched it actually I'm getting choked up because like one of the worst things that you can do as a driver is crash your truck right but it's even worse if you hurt somebody I I probably once I realized the it wasn't gonna stop I probably would have ditched it on the left hand side of the road there that's what I would have done and I'm curious what what would you choose to do obviously as a driver like it's your job to keep your equipment on the road and safe and not damaged but what's better what do you think is better do you do you ditch the truck and you know that probably the only person that gets hurt is you or and you you know you lose your job or somebody else gets hurt that's the thing that I think about and I honestly I I would have ditched it even you know it doesn't matter whose truck I'm driving my truck somebody else's truck I would have ditched it on the left hand side of the road that's just what I would have done. I'm curious what you guys would do. Just, yeah, tell me in the comments. This other one here was sent to me and I I thought it was pretty interesting and 
Obviously, we've all seen the articles that talk about who causes more crashes, trucks or passion, passenger vehicles. And we all hear people's opinions about uh, how trucks are so dangerous and we need to regulate the trucking more because trucks are so dangerous. And then you hear the studies that majority of accidents are caused by people in cars and passenger vehicles. And this TikTok was sent to me and I just, I'm curious, I'm going to give my thoughts on it. Research shows I want to 78% of crashes or near crashes are caused by drivers of passenger vehicles. Experts say driving around a big rig can be particularly dangerous when vehicles spend too much time in one of the truck's massive blind spots. Watch as this red car drives below the truck driver's line of sight, becoming virtually invisible. Get a glimpse of just how tough visibility can be when you're in the driver's seat of an 18 wheeler sitting here in the driver's seat i'm checking the left mirror the right mirror looking in front of us and it looks clear but take a look at our drone shot there are seven other vehicles and motorcycles all around us there's a motorcycle in front of us to the left of the truck and another semi truck behind us all sitting in blind spots Large trucks have not one, but four blind spots, referred to as no zones. Since there's no rear view mirror, the no zone in the back can stretch 200 feet. The most dangerous area is to the right, where the no zone can span more than three lanes, which is why only passing on the left side, where the blind spot is smaller, is so critical. And once you pass, experts say wait until you see the entire front of the truck in your own rear view mirror before merging in front of it to avoid that often forgotten blind spot just below the truck's fender. There's a motorcycle in front of us. I don't see it at all. A fully loaded semi can weigh up to 80,000 pounds and at highway speeds can take the length of a football field to stop. A lot of times people will pass a truck get right in front of it and slow back down. And sometimes that truck driver doesn't have enough time to react. That could end in a rear end collision. The number one tip is to give them extra space so that that truck driver can respond to any unexpected event to help prevent that crash. Now, I've heard those numbers before, of course, you know, 78% of crashes are caused by passenger vehicles. How, what do you guys think? Do you believe in that? Or do you think it's more? Do you think it's less? Um, I personally, have been in several moving accidents as a truck driver and i don't have one in my history that was my fault and i it wasn't me it was i was i've been rear-ended um i've had people change lanes into me i've had people change lanes into my reach you know that kind of stuff so it's it's definitely an interesting situation. Do you think that people are just really unaware of how big trucks are or how much they weigh? And like, it, it cracks me up because I definitely, even just a couple of days ago, um, was driving down I-5 fully loaded and a car comes, you know, zooming up my left-hand side, which is great, passing side, great, go for it. But then when they got past me, they changed lanes directly right in front of me and I had to hit my brakes. Luckily I was paying attention. If I had not hit my brakes, they would have pit maneuvered themselves because they barely made it like got the driver's seat past my front bumper before they started coming over and their rear bumper was still basically behind my front bumper. And the last thing I want is to be in any sort of accident, even if it's not my fault. So like I slammed on my brakes and they pulled right in front of me and slowed down. And I was just like, oh my gosh, why? Why? Why when you're driving a car, do you think it's a good idea to do that? It just doesn't make any sense. And I... I've talked about this in other videos where one of the reasons why I hate driving solo is because when I look in my mirror, obviously like if something is closer back there, I can see it a lot better. So I can see how very close people are following like right behind my truck and I'll be going down the, the road, even the freeway and I'll look back and there'll be like a little SUV like right on my tail and I don't, I don't get it. Why do you need to follow me so close? I don't understand it. And so I'm really curious what you guys think. What do you guys think about that video? What, 
what do you think about how cars behave on the road versus trucks? And I'm not telling you that every truck driver is, you know, God's gift to truck driving because they truck drivers make mistakes all the time. But do you think in general that trucks are the problem on the road or the passenger vehicles are the problem on the road? And I mean, and think about it this way. If you drive a passenger vehicle and you think that I'm in the wrong about whether trucks are the problem or cars are the problem or, you know, drivers that drive cars are the problem. Think about it this way. How much time does someone that commutes to and from work in their car and, you know, runs to soccer practice, how many thousand miles a year do they drive? I mean, what is the, the country average? I mean, probably 15,000, 20,000 a year or something like that. Think about truck drivers. We're on the road all day, every day. And depending on what you haul, you could go anywhere from 200 miles a day to seven, 800 miles a day. I, I, still, I see TikToks of people claiming they go a thousand or 1200, but I don't necessarily believe that. But, you know, and that's just one day, you know, and you're thinking about the cars where people, you know, in Washington to be able to afford to live. So they probably, they, they can live 45, 50 miles from Seattle to be able to afford to own a house. But, you know, they're driving anywhere from, you know, 10 miles a day to a hundred if they have a long, a very, very long commute. So the skill gap, you have to think about the skill gap also. So who's the problem? Is it truck drivers or is it passenger vehicles? Who really needs more training and why why is the reduction in training when it comes to driving a car or a truck becoming so common? Why shouldn't education on how to control a vehicle that weighs between, you know, a ton and 50 tons, you know, why is it, it why isn't it more basically like, why isn't there more education? Do you guys think that learning to drive around trucks should be part of driver's ed or just the basic skills on how to get a car down the road legally what should it be now definitely tell me in the comments and we'll see about doing a follow-up to this but anyways you guys thank you so much for watching and if you have not yet subscribed please do and like always the beyonder merch the link is in the description if you're interested and i will see you guys next time